For nine seasons, viewers of The Office followed the goings at Dunder Mifflin Scranton's office, and even though it has been several years since the last episode aired on NBC, fans of the show simply cannot stop talking about it. To this day, fans are still noticing new things and keep discovering new Easter eggs, and even if you're a fan of the show, we bet that you've never noticed these nine hidden details in The Office. The break room at the Dunder Mifflin Scranton branch is the setting of quite a few important moments in the office, but most people probably don't pay much attention to the background during these moments. While you've surely noticed the vending machine supplying candy and other food items, you have probably never noticed that it costs a small fortune to purchase anything from these machines. At one point, the people working at the office could purchase an apple, cup of noodles, or soup, but any of these items would have cost them $4.35, which is pretty expensive expensive, especially for an apple. In the episode The Surplus from Season 5, The Office is at odds and fighting over whether to spend a budget surplus on new chairs or a new copying machine, with Jim, Pam, and Oscar in particular trying to convince Michael how to spend the money. Wow, okay. Well, I swallowed all your ideas. I'm going to digest them and see what comes out the other end. In the episode, there is one scene where Jim brings Pam back some tiramisu from a work lunch, which she immediately throws into the trash because of the fight though. But while not much attention is given to this incident, we can actually see Michael eat some messed up tiramisu later on in the episode. Michael! Hey, David. <coughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm eating tiramisu. From the chocolate powder just went down my throat which is obviously the one from Pam's trash. And before you try to argue that he might have simply brought in his own tiramisu to the office, let us just draw your attention to the scene from before and the fact that Michael doesn't have any tiramisu with him when he walks through the door. Only Jim does and we all saw that he gave it to Pam. And if you're still not convinced, more proof comes from the look on Pam's face when Michael later mentions someone dumping tiramisu in the garbage because she obviously knows who did it. We even have paper. And we are spoiled because we throw out perfectly good tiramisu because it has a little tiny hair on it. My point is this. While some restaurants show off certificates for the best food or the like, the certificate that Dunder Mifflin proudly exhibits is a little different and might make environmentally conscious viewers feel a little uneasy. Hanging on the wall in the office is a framed award from the Rainforest Harvesters Association, bestowing Dunder Mifflin with the One Million Cut Trees Award. This is easily missed if you don't pay attention to the background, but just one of several fun certificates you can find in the series. In the season 8 episode Pool Party, Robert California decides to sell his mansion following his divorce and Kevin Malone suggests that he have an office pool party. At this party, there is a scene where Oscar drinks from a bottle of wine and it seems like he was so excited to start drinking that no one realized that the prop label was still stuck on the bottom of the bottle. So if you pause the episode at the right moment, you can clearly see a tape with the word Oscar on the bottom of the bottle of 1997 Chateau Guelmont. Dwight and his cousin Moe's Schrute own and operate Schrute Farms where they grow beets and hemp and keep various animals on a seemingly non-commodified level. In addition to that, Dwight also runs a bed and breakfast out of his home. And as of this morning, we are completely wireless here at Schrute Farms. But as soon as I find out where Moe's hit all the wires, we'll get that power back on. Alrighty. But while any fan of the show knows all that, there is one very interesting detail that most of you probably missed. If you pay close attention to the flag on the Shroot Farm's porch, you will notice that this flag only bears 15 stripes and 15 stars, and there's a bit of history behind it. This particular flag was created in 1795 and represented the addition of Vermont and Kentucky to the 13 original colonies, and even though more states were added during that time, the flag wasn't changed in 1818. Since Shroot Farms was established in 1812, the flag is historically accurate but has apparently not been changed in over 200 years. In the episode The Ultimatum from the show's seventh season, Pam is inspired by the cheerful office administrator from Vance Refrigeration and decides to put up a New Year's resolution board in the office so everyone can post their goals for the next year. Resolution board. Wow, did your baby draw that? The glitter is blinding. 
I think it's good. You will obviously find normal and character consistent resolutions on the board, like Jim wanting to bike more, Michael resolving to floss, Kevin Malone resolving to eat more vegetables, Ryan Howard resolving to live life like it's an art project, Creed Bratton resolving to do a cartwheel, and Aaron planning to learn new words every day. However, you can also see a few pretty funny goals on the resolution board if you try to look a little closer. For instance, Dwight wants to meet a loose woman, while in accordance with her personality, Kelly's resolution is to get more attention by any means necessary. You don't have to do them. Meredith, what are you doing? I could be pregnant. Okay, no. Oh, my resolution was to get more attention. No, nope, she's lying. Interestingly enough, Stanley's resolution is to be a better husband and boyfriend, even though this comes a whole season after he had promised to end his affair with Cynthia. However, the two don't officially break up until the episode Garden Party from the show's eighth season. The season 4 episode Dinner Party is one of the most popular ones of the entire series, because pretty much every moment of this episode is pure awkwardness, but nothing is more awkward than Michael and Jan's attempts to provide a fun evening for their guests. My, my turn! My, 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 my turn! My, 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 my turn! Babe, can you just like, what? really, whoa, <laughs> we're just like, really... What? During one scene, the two fight and Jan eventually takes one of Michael's Dundee Awards and throws it at the small plasma TV hanging on the wall, breaking the screen. However, it seems like Michael is so attached to the plasma that he just can't get rid of it. That is a $200 plasma screen TV that you just killed! Good luck paying me back on your zero dollars a year salary plus benefits paid! Because a whole season later in the episode Michael Scott Paper Company, he purchases a larger, boxier TV and simply sets it up right underneath the still broken plasma. It isn't until season 7 episode 19 that Michael is finally ready to part with the broken plasma, but instead of throwing it out, he actually attempts to sell it at the warehouse garage sale. Any fan of The Office will remember the season 4 episode Did I Stutter, where Dwight makes an organizational chart of the chain of command in The Office, as well as an emergency disaster mode, which was a very detailed prop that got so much attention that NBC later made it available on their homepage. However, in so doing, it zigs past your name, hence zagging you and making you appear weak. That's the yellow color, yellow for cowardly. The chart is full of information about Dwight's co-workers that he has collected over the years. It features icons indicating their defining traits according to Dwight, such as Oscar's sexual orientation and Andy's education at Cornell University that he so often references, for example. And the chart even includes moons under the female co-workers' names, indicating not only each female employee's time of the month, but a large X over the icon also indicates the women who are posted menopausal. What's the pink? Menstrual cycles. But most interesting is the fact that Dwight has put Creed Bratton's name in quotation marks because he probably knows that Creed is using a fake name due to his mysterious background story that includes stolen identities as well as selling weed and pirate code on the list of things he has experience with. Since The Office ended nearly 7 years ago, fans have had no choice but to keep re-watching the series over and over again, and this has led to people noticing more and more of the smallest details and well-hidden easter eggs. One of the best easter eggs in the series can be found in the first episode of season 5. All she does is plop herself down there and answer phones all day. The nerve. Oh, calm down, weirdo. Just a joke. She's such a weirdo! In the episode, Michael introduces Pam to the office's replacement receptionist, Ronnie, via video chat and explains that Ronnie is having a hard time finding those little colored paper clips he likes so much. Some genius fan then discovered that the model number of the paper clips Michael refers to is actually the same number as Jim and Pam's license plate number, namely CHD0032. So if you search for the number online, the little colored paper clips mentioned in the episode will come up. Thank you for checking this video out, and don't forget to smash that like button and also subscribe for new videos every day. Turn that bell notification on and comment down below that you subscribed, and we'll make sure to reply and thank as many of you as we possibly can. Once again thank you for watching and see you next time.